You're really good at this. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have no idea what's happening. Welcome into another High Five on the What Podcast. Barry Corder, Lord Taco. I'm uh, Brad. Nice to see you guys again. How are things? Everything's great here. Yeah? Good. I mean, it's a haircut day. I see Got haircut day. Got a lot of them cut. Happen, yeah. happen in your sleep, obviously? You know, it's funny. I say, don't cut it too short. Uh -huh. that's the, every time I do, uh -huh. that's when it cuts. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what? Uh -huh. It grows back. Yeah. So I'm not going to complain about it. I'm uh, very excited today. We're going to uh, do a high five. We'll get some news to get through. Uh, and also um, a little bit of an announcement later on in the uh, show today. But first, I wanted to start. You guys don't know this guy. but I And I don't know how many people listen that would know. But one of the greats in my industry died over the weekend. And in honor of him, I've worn my WXR t-shirt from Chicago. One of the great... Uh, radio stations in this country uh, is WXRT in Chicago, and a guy that was basically the heartbeat of that radio station, Lynn Brimmer, uh, passed away from a uh, battle with cancer uh, over the weekend. Really one of the great storytellers, one of the great uh, music guys that you'll ever hear on the radio. So um, for all those who might be listening in around Chicago or ever experienced WXRT, one of the greatest stations you'll ever listen to in your life. If you ever want to uh, get a... Uh, uh, a, a class on how to do this. Listen to WXRT on the um, on your uh, Google box. So yeah, there you go. In honor of Lynn, the man WXRT shirt. Uh, so the uh, little bit of news that happened over the weekend too was, or since we last chatted, was Jazz Fest. Uh, now, as a former New Orleanian, and I think that I'm a, will always be a New Orleanian, uh, the Jazz Fest lineup seemed, at least to me. A tad underwhelming. Barry Corder, how'd you take it? What'd you think? Well, first of all, I got to ask, do you count yourself as a Chattanoogan as well? Do you brag on that up there in uh, the big city? I mean, I... You tell people you're Chattanooga? I, I mean, I've taken the Usher uh, approach to Chattanooga <laughs> well, that I will, as soon as they give me a street, I'm uh, yeah. I'm back. Best thing to come out of there is I-75, right? Yeah. No, I mean, but I, I think of Chattanooga as much as I think of Richmond. Richmond being uh, the place that I grew up in D.C. And, and then Chattanooga for 20 years. But, you know, nothing has caught my heart and mind like New Orleans. Nothing, right. nothing got me as much as New Orleans did. All right, back to your question. I'm looking at the lineup. I, I like it a whole lot. Um, I, I like it way more than you do, I think. But... Um, the these are all people that i want to see many of them i have seen uh which is an interesting question you know um bucket list versus seen them many times but i like this lineup pretty much from top to bottom i could be entertained throughout so first off i i know that it's been brought up but uh boy they really do pull out all the stops with that poster design uh, they talk about a graphic design course 101. Boy, that poster stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Um, you, know, you know, it is what it is. God love them. The problem that I have with the lineup is, uh, it's just not a problem. I mean, Jazz Fest is great. I feel as though there have been Jazz Fest lineups in the past that feel so much more, so much more oomph. You know, you had years where the Who are playing, you yeah, know? Yeah, and Van Morrison. Yeah, that's what I mean. They, you had bucket list acts, acts that you're never going to see anywhere else. And I think you pointed out off the air that a lot of these acts you can see pretty much on the regular down there. So the thing about the Jazz Fest line is, like, after the top three lines, everybody is pretty much playing every week. <laughs> like, those last ten lines of Jazz Fest, the 20 lines of Jazz Fest, those are, you know, mostly locals. And... Um, it's great for people who love the culture and, and love New Orleans music. Uh, but if you're going down there for, you know, The Who or one of the big shows, uh, I, I don't know if, if this is going to do it for you. I Look, I, I like it. Don't get me wrong. I like it a lot. I am a huge uh, Her fan, right? I love The Revivalists. Um, there are so many local artists that I, I adore. Nicholas Payton's one of the great artists on this planet. Uh, I'll see Robert Randolph any day, anytime. Uh, Duran Jones doing a solo show. 
Uh, John Boutte, one of the great s- voices in all of New Orleans, Lost Bayou Ramblers, Hot Eight Brass Band. Like, there is so much there that if you uh, love this culture and love, you know, the the sound of New Orleans, it's fantastic for you. I don't know if I really want to see Steve Miller, though. You know, I don't know if I really care about Santana at this point in my life. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, you and I have had that. You've got a I bad. Know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Santana is one of the greats. We uh, had that conversation. Why would you not want to see Santana? I just, I can't. I don't know. I know. Uh, we've but had I'll, this. I'll agree. So I'm looking at it a little differently. I'm not looking at the poster. I'm looking at a lineup list. And so I'm looking at 24 acts. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dead and Company, Lumineers, Tedeschi, Allison Krauss, uh, Buddy Guy, Guy Clark Jr., Mumford, Robert Plant, Leon Bridges, Kane Brown. Chattanooga, by the way. Kane Brown, Chattanooga, Melissa Etheridge, and Los Lobos have all been to Chattanooga. So to your point, I've seen them. Um, Lizzo, could have met her with you, my bad. John <laughs> Baptiste, I know I screwed up. Steve Miller. And by the way, uh, we, have Tana we ever list. told that story of like Barry? I don't know, Taco. Do you remember when I, I brought Lizzo and uh, to town, and and like Barry was two blocks away, and he's yeah. like, "Nah, I'm just gonna <laughs> no, hang out no, here." Oh no, <laughs> no, it wasn't it. A coworker of mine messed me up. Um, yeah, we it's always a coworker. We won't go into that person, but. Her issues cost me an interview or a meeting with Lizzo, and I'm still not over it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was not on purpose. It was not me blowing it off. Okay. Um, so you're telling me Ed Sheeran's not one of those bucket list items for you? No, no. So I'm just saying okay. those are the people that I've seen. So are the rest of them, and here's here's my question, because uh, we talk about legacy acts at Bonnaroo. They've got Tom Jones, Kenny Loggins, and. Eh. I'll never forgive him for the whole Caddyshack song. Uh, Herbie Hancock, which was the Legend Act last year, right? I mean, the Legacy Act. Um, mm-hmm. And I mean, look the the, the thing that the, about uh, Jazz Fest was always there was there was always a few names on there that I'm wowed. I mean, something that they got that nobody else got, and it felt so massive. Um, and it, especially for an independent organization like the New Orleans Jazz Heritage Foundation, where they can, you know, uh, do and, and book a festival that's over, you know, 10 days um, by themselves. The only wow that I got here is Wu-Tang. Like Wu-Tang, <laughs> Wu-Tang being on this lineup is the only one that I'm like, oh, my God, that is massive yeah. for a guy that and I hate to be, give you too much information here, wearing Wu-Tang underwear right now. Um, <laughs> too way too much. I, I uh, that's the one that got me. Like, oh my god. Um, yeah. See, uh, Tom Jones. You know, it's not. I don't know what the show's gonna be like. I, is it Lionel Richie? I, but I'd love to be able to say I've seen Tom Jones. I mean, man. In the hey Taco. The, by the way, we really hit those younger demos when Dad starts talking about Tom <laughs> Jones. <laughs> I was getting ready to say when I was a kid in the seventies. You know, all my Kid, all my friends' mothers were huge. Uh, it was Elvis and Tom Jones. I, I can't Taco, do you, do you want to go? Taco, yeah. you want to go to mom and find some Tom Jones moms? <laughs> yes, because no, hey, yeah, you, you know he, he did, did that. Like grandmoms. He did, he did that Prince song, man. The, the kids probably are digging that. Oh wow, he knows <laughs> how to know, connect people. He knows how well, to connect. That's the whole point. Yeah. Well, I thought the same about Lionel Richie. That's my point. That's exactly what I thought when they booked Lionel Richie, and people are still talking about it. So I was wrong. Um, but no, I get your point. Angelique Kijo, huge, huge fan. That's one of those you know you don't get to see maybe but once or twice in your life. Um, yeah, to me, it's a good lineup. I get your point. It 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 is definitely a lineup full of people that I have seen. Yeah, um, well, which is your point. Well, the other thing too, like uh, Jazz Fest is another one of these that is just so experiential that um, if it's not about the lineup, right? It's about the culture and everything that happens around it. The fact that you know you leave um, you leave the grounds and and you you know go get gumbo. Um, yeah. That that to me is is. Uh, is is the point the fact that i moved to new orleans to live in the same neighborhood as jazz fest 
and yet never actually went to a jazz fest. Still really irritates me, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, I literally was there. I, it was in my backyard. It, I lived two blocks away from jazz fest entrance. And uh, no, never got one. I never yeah. got one. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, the, the amount of time that I would just sit around, you know, and thinking to myself, you know, and I'd be sitting there having you know, gumbo, I, I'd... I'd I could. I can't wait to do this after Jazz Fest one night. I can't wait to be in this space and have all the. Nope, never got there. Um, <laughs> you know. Oh well, we'll be back soon enough. Um, all right. Anything else on Jazz Fest you want to get to? Oh, your boy of uh, Mdu Mokhtar is there, by the way. I was gonna, I, yeah, I saw that earlier. Yeah, we never did get to talk to him. Dad, gum it. There is not look. I, now that I'm talking about this, it, it, it is it is built for the day, getting there at noon and staying there until seven o'clock and seeing you know nonstop incredible artists from New Orleans and then leaving when the headliner gets on. Yeah, that's sort of the way that it's the, the at least the locals do it. If you're coming from out of town, you come to see you know Santana and Lizzo. Yeah. Um, it's just a different way of doing it. And I, I think that I'm just, I think that I was more bummed out about how bad the poster was. <laughs> I think it just sort of took me completely out of the conversation. I was like, oh. Yeah, see, isn't that funny? Yeah. Something like that. I know, I know. Um, it's funny how the beer tastes different with a funny label on it, right? You know, it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and depending on who recommended it and where you are and all that kind of. Yeah. It's interesting. But I, I think you just described a good day for me there. I could get there at noon, stay till however, and uh, and be happy all day long mm -hmm. with whoever's playing. You would love it. I mean, it's a fantastic experience. Yeah. I I want to. I, I mean, I want to be there right now. I'm going to be there in three weeks. Uh, I'll just stay for Jazz Fest, I guess. Well, they've had lineups before where it was really uh, top heavy, like with the Who. Yeah, and, that's right. And Van Morrison that I wanted to see them, and no one else really made me feel like what am i going to do the rest of the day yeah so this is kind of the opposite i guess well yeah what would you do with the rest of the day as you go discover you know New Orleans, yeah you go sure. discover nicholas payton um you know it, it, like jazz fest is is one of those things where on a normal night i'd walk down frenchman and that's where i found uh, andrew duhan and and uh, nicholas payton and then you know this is now taking it off the streets and putting it onto uh the, the <laughs> festival grounds and you know, you don't have to walk up and down fe uh, Frenchman to find it. I'm sorry. I'm just now seeing the poster. <laughs> that's really bad. It's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> that that looks like some high school kid's first draft. Uh huh. Yeah. Mom's wow. first graphic design project. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Now I'm going to figure out how to change the font. <laughs> that's, that's the more task. <laughs> <clears throat> and then if you go on the website, they've broken it down, which you know, which weekend is which. So th the first weekend is Ed Sheeran, Lizzo, Robert Plant, Jill Scott for your top heavy. And uh, your boy of Kenny Loggins and my people of Wu-Tang. The second weekend is when you got Dead and Company, Mumford, Lumineers, Santana. Talk about uh, knowing your audience on that second weekend. Um, they, I mean, it's, you couldn't find them. You know, bands that more, uh, more tied to each other than Lumineers, Mumford and Son, Dead and Company. Um, yeah, so that is, and we didn't really talk about that either. But the whole two weekend thing, I, as a fan, I don't. I, how does anybody make that work unless you're, you know, you're local? Uh, that's a, that's a long slog unless you drive back or something. I don't. Well, know yeah, and that it's that built works. for locals, right? I mean, that's the sure. kind of thing that's built for. If you go to all nine days, eight days, it's you know you're you're going for like a few hours and then coming home. Yeah. Um, and, and frankly, you know, I know people that show up just to eat the food and leave, right? Because the crawfish bread or the crawfish mac and cheese, you know, is, are so incredible that they just go to have lunch and leave. You know, <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is once a year. You get this once a year. Uh, all right, uh, let's uh, take a break. We'll come right back with uh, our high five of this week and a little bit more. A little announcement next on the What Podcast. So we have uh, again for the I feel like tenth year in a row we have tickets to give away. Um, now, to be fair, uh, they are not you know where we camp, wherever <laughs> that might be. Uh, they are general admission tickets and they are general admission camping tickets that uh, you can 
very easily upgrade if you want. But this is your ticket into the festival and into the campgrounds uh, that we'll have more information on in the coming weeks. But uh, mark it on your calendars, Lord Taco. We've got tickets for Bonnaroo coming up very soon. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate that. He's a wordsmith. He is. Guy. He nails it every time. <laughs> So this week's high five, Barry, uh, tell me about who we're talking to this week and what memory we're uh, reliving today. We've got Devin Gafillion, who you brought to us and turned uh, us on to. And I just, I, I told you the other day, I've got a man crush on that guy. Uh, I love his music, but he was so nice and we had so much fun talking to him. I mean, it was, uh, it was one of those where you say hello and it's like you've been friends forever. Um, and I also loved his story. I think this clip, you asked him to tell us a little bit about himself, and he mentioned that he had gone to school, uh, was going to be a psychology major, yeah. I think, if, mm. I'm, if I remember right, but decided he liked singing more and was either going to move to Nashville or New Orleans or one other place, Austin maybe, and uh, ended up in Nashville but the best part and the part about this clip that I love is he talks about his dad, who is a wedding singer, uh, which is where he learned, you know, his love of so many different genres. And it tells a pretty funny story about. Also where he dad. learned the electric slide. <laughs> well, pretty, that's what it pretty much he learned. You know, he, he loved watching his dad learn, you know, the hits of the day. Mm -hmm. So you guys make fun of me. So I can only imagine, you know, him watching his dad learn Michael Jackson mm -hmm. or Nelly or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So pretty funny stuff. Right. And, and, uh, the real point is he was on that 2021 lineup and which never happened. And he is on this year's lineup. And so. do we, I remind me if, if you remember, but did, he talk about that being his first Bonnaroo, or has he played before? I don't necessarily I think it was remember. His first. Okay, and he was going to play Thursday. It, it would have been his first. Oh, okay, yeah. is he, he on Thursday this on, year? What's he on this no, year? No, he's on Saturday. Ooh, wow, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Thursday he was, you know, going to be the unknown, and uh, now he's on Saturday, and he's middle lineup. I want to mm -hmm. say fourth line, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit further down. That'd be an early afternoon show, either way. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's do it. And he's a, for me, he's a, he's a great, he's a don't miss. Well, he's also got some of the best hair in the business. So <laughs> we'll that's talk all. about that in the show. Uh, well, that's usually our go-to conversation. Yeah, well, if you remember, he was uh, spot on in his, uh, his uh, comments. So I'll just leave it there. All right, let's do it. <laughs> it's another High Five on the What podcast. You know, I, I love I love Devin so much, and I would say this even if he wasn't uh, a part of the show. I um, am so excited about his show. I'm so excited about him hitting the bottom lineup. I love the fact that he's sort of like the show for Thursday for me. But I want to start, if you don't mind, Devin, for the people that don't know who you are. Yes. Can you just give me the, the ABC of what, who, why Devin is Devin? So yeah, ABC, let's go. Um, right. I, I love, you know, I'm a, I'm a product of so many things, art, rhythm and blues, rock and roll, psychedelic rock, soul, uh, folk, every, you know, gospel. Uh, but, you know, Mar I would say my two North Stars are Marvin Gaye and Jimi Hendrix. And, you know, I, I, I want to, I want to touch the world the way that they did and, and, and do it in 2021, you know, and, 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 you know, I, I, I'm from outside of Philly, born in a little small town in Morton, Pennsylvania, grew up playing music up, up, you know, just kind of like dilly dallying with some bands here, here and there. And my dad's a music, a, a wedding singer. So, you know, he was, know a, that. oh yeah, yeah. He's, he's there the it one, is. he's the one who got me into it, you know, there it is. I was going to ask. Yeah. yeah, there had to be a yeah wedding. What a perfect! I mean, you're gonna hear all kinds of stuff from a wedding singer, right? Oh man, he was. I remember watching my dad learn Nelly. It's getting hot in here, like <laughs> when that came out, and that was the goofiest, funniest thing I've ever seen to watch him yeah. 
watch him rap that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, funny, son, I'm doing this for the white women. Uh, <laughs> was, it, was it cringeworthy kind of funny for you? I mean, oh, it was cringe. Oh, cringy, <laughs> cringe, funny. Like it was, it was the most cringeworthy funny. But, it, but but also, you know, he also was singing Earth, Wind and Fire, Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles and, you know, all the Michael Jackson and, and you know, all those cats and the jet, like all those, you know, Ar- M- Marvin and, and the Temptations, all the Motown stuff. So that that's all the soul. I got it from from Pops, from Nelson. So, so Lord Taco and Barry, you know this well about me. Uh, but, you know, if, if not for, you know, 60s soul. I don't know if I'm the person that I am. Uh, if not for Syl Johnson and Otis oh. Redding and Otis Clay, I'm not the person I am. But to me, the one that doesn't get any of the credit is um, the king of Philly soul, Mr. Solomon Burke. Uh, oh, man. And one of the greatest shows I've ever seen at Bonnaroo was one of the final shows that Solomon Burke ever had. I mean, it was oh. one of these moments where I looked around and, Devin, there might have been, I don't know, 85 people there. She, Nobody knew what Solomon Burke was, and they didn't know what in the world was was happening on stage. But uh, when I think when I think of you, I think of the King of Philly Soul, uh, Mr. Solomon Burke. So I'm glad that you, yeah. you rattled off all of the people that that sort of shaped <laughs> me. As, we're essentially the same person, I think, is what I'm trying to say. You and right? me might be the same person. No, yeah, yeah, no, you're my brother from another mother. Come on, sure, man. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, did, how, did, how, did, how did it get i'm sorry to interrupt but how did you get from philly to nashville how did that story get come about well you know i was going to school for psychology actually in westchester pennsylvania and then i was like no nah, I, I don't want to be a therapist it's not that's not what i want to do so i applied to uh, programs in the americorps which uh, is kind of like the peace corps but you you work for a nonprofit that's based in the United States. You can go anywhere in the U.S. So I chose, I applied to Nashville, New Orleans, and Austin and got uh, got accepted to the program in Nashville. You're telling me, New Orleans, we missed you by this much? We this, missed you by this much? This yeah. much, man, this much. I would have loved to kick it around NOLA. Yeah. But, but uh, you know, Nashville, I'm really glad that I got, I, I got, I basically Nashville chose me, you know, in a way. And, uh, if it hadn't, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. So it's crazy. <laughs> the, 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 I love the, the, I was going to go back to the Hendrix and, uh, Marvin Gaye. Cause they're, I mean, I heard another band earlier this week, the, the, their three main influences were basically Hendrix and, and Marvin soul and Miles Davis. Wow. And I mean, right? I mean, if you if you're going to go with three bases, that's, that's a pretty the, good mix right there, isn't it? It's going to make a, a nice gumbo right there. That I'll tell yeah, you that. You can pull from anything. <laughs> uh, yeah. He is really really killing my New Orleans thing, isn't he? He's really <laughs> he's driving that harder and harder, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> throw some throw some Cajun spice on, on yes. in that one right there, you know. Please do. Please do. <laughs> But no, I mean, Jimmy, Marvin, and Miles, I mean, goodness, Lord, that's, yeah, you, you got yourself. That's it, right? Just the Holy Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it again. The New like, Orleans funds just can't stop. The Holy <laughs> Trinity. <laughs> Consequence Podcast Network.